I was in my apartment uh, the, the the day it happened. The, the the place I was living at that time was over on Second Avenue, and uh, and we had a uh, we were on the twenty seventh floor, uh, so we had a pretty decent view of the Manhattan skyline. Uh, and I remember I was getting ready to go to Marvel, and uh, I saw one of the maintenance men coming up, and and he was he he wanted to go up to the roof to see what was going on, and we really weren't quite sure what he was talking about. He said, "Look out your window, look downtown." And we did, and there we saw this plume of smoke coming from the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, so my wife and I just assumed that uh, there was a fire going on. We had no idea. Um, but, uh, but then we had heard that it was a terrorist attack, so, so my immediate impulse was to run to work uh, to find out if everybody was okay, you know, and just, just to sort of, you know, I had to figure there was going to be some sort of, you know, uh, un unsettled, an unsettled nature in the office. Uh, so being editor-in-chief, I wanted to get there and, and just sort of, you know, put a stake in the sand and say, okay, we're all here, who's here, is everybody okay? Uh, as it turned out, uh, we unfortunately lost one member of the Marvel family, uh, who was the, the, the father of one of our employees, who was actually a maintenance worker, <clears throat> who was working in the towers at the time, uh, and refused to leave the towers uh, until he was certain that people had gotten out of there. Uh, but unfortunately, he was buried under the rubble. Tons of stories like that. Yeah, uh, me personally, uh, me and my wife, we lost a uh, we lost a family friend, uh, firefighter Michael Otten, who uh, who was also uh, you know, lost when the towers fell as well. Um, you know, it, it was it was probably a day or two afterwards, uh, because I, th I think anybody who was involved in there at 9/11 at Ground Zero, you know, we we all had a certain feeling that went along with that, being New Yorkers and, and, and being here as it happened. Uh, but the one thing that, that I noticed was that even in the artistic community, and our artists don't just live in New York, they, they live nationwide, worldwide, um, there, was a lot, there was a really uneasy feeling amongst the artistic community. And, 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 and artists that wanted to do something, but really sort of felt landlocked, like, what, what do you do? You know, you, you can't just draw a picture. And it sort of dawned on me, well, well maybe we can. Maybe, maybe we can do something. Uh, and I started reaching out to the artistic community and, 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 and had our editors making phone calls uh, a few days afterwards saying, you know, maybe we can do something. We're, we're pretty sure uh, that there's going to be people that are going to need money for relief after this is all said and done. It's, it's, a, it's a disaster of the you know, greatest magnitude. Um, so thinking ahead in that, in that sense, we, we started planning uh, and trying to devise a way in which our creators could get involved. and get the emotional release out, as well as trying to do something that would be good towards a cause. The hero's idea came first. Uh, that was the, the, the quickest and, 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 and uh, most visceral way that we saw of, of getting to, uh, to the heart of the matter. Uh, moment of silence, I'm sorry, the, the let me backtrack. Um, the Spider-Man issue uh, came just a few days later where, where I contacted the writer of Spider-Man, Joe Straczynski at the time, and said, Joe, you know, Spider-Man is synonymous with New York. We, we use uh, the New York landscape as the canvas, the backdrop. Uh, and, and I noticed also at that time, at that time already, you know, other aspects of the entertainment field were sort of taking the Twin Towers uh, imagery out of promotional material, out of advertisements. Uh, and that felt wrong to me because it, it, it felt like all of a sudden we were, we were ignoring the fact these buildings existed, we, it, it, and it felt callous. So uh, I thought that for us to shy away from it, uh, for Marvel to say that, you know, all of a sudden to take the Twin Towers out of any Spider-Man book that they may be appearing in, or just to take the city out of the Spider-Man books, uh, really wasn't the right thing to do, and, and, and we wanted to address it head on. Uh, and I remember saying to Joe, you know, is there a story there? Can, can, you, can you write a story about Spider-Man our everyman, our everyman New Yorker, uh, the, the icon of the Marvel Universe, experiencing what we're all experiencing with the towers falling down. Uh, and Joe's first reaction was, I, I don't think I could do it. I just don't, don't know what that story is. Uh, I said, cool, no problem. If it's not there, it's not there. Uh, we hung up, and then the next morning he called up, and he said, uh, not only do I have the story, but I wrote it overnight. And he handed in his uh, his Spider-Man issue that uh, that really sort of dealt with the horrors of the Twin Towers and Spider-Man getting there after it happens and not being able to believe what he sees. Very much the same way that we all couldn't believe what we saw. Yeah. Being helpless like the rest of us. Basically, yes. And 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 the spirit uh, of uh, of the city and the heroes of the city uh, being the spirit that really uh, creates 
all these stories that we do at Marvel, all these heroic stories, uh, they're the inspiration. So it, it, it was a very metaphorical story. It's not meant to be taken literally, uh, but the idea is that you know that that everything that we you know all these fantastic stories that we create of Marvel, these, these stories of these great heroes uh, and even great villains, all this stuff. Um, is inspired. It comes from somewhere, and, and and it comes from those people and people like that that, the that real are life. the real life heroes. Absolutely, uh, you know, I, I it was very <clears throat> it was very evident to me at that at that point in time that the the, the line between um, that firefighter or that that EMT worker or that police officer uh, at Ground Zero and Spider Man that line was wafer thin. Now it was you know they're, they're, it really was one and the same and at the end of the day what what greater hero than than those people down there well the more important thing i think even than that mm. and perhaps you can address it as well because i'm giving it to you <laughs> um, but the fact is i mean you're dealing when you're dealing with quote unquote superheroes <clears throat> you know these people who have extraordinary mm -hmm. powers and they go out and they battle right. super villains and all this kind of stuff and here you have something that was clearly as in, in the real world, on a par with anything mm -hmm. that any you know, it's, it, and it was real. It wasn't like Galactus eating the world. Right. It was it was these people, and the people went in without heat powers, right. without costumes, webs, mm -hmm. capes. They just went in without right. a regard for themselves. Could you sort of talk about that? Because that was the, what what was really wonderful about that book was the helplessness of the costume heroes mm -hmm. and the fact that it acknowledged the, the true real-life heroism mm -hmm. of those guys who ran into those towers. Yeah, well, I mean, all, all that was there. It, it, was, it, it, it was very evident by, by the help, helplessness Pardon me, by the helplessness that Spider-Man felt at that one moment. I mean, I still have that image embedded in my mind of Spider-Man just sort of reeling uh, with, with with just pain and remorse at these towers that have that have fallen down, and then the the amazement in his eyes to see normal everyday people not run away from this thing, but run towards it uh, to to help, to rescue, to do whatever it is that, that needed to be done. In, in essence, you know, showing off the, the the superhero in everyone, which which again is is it was part of the story. It was it was these everyday people inspiring. Uh, the, the superhero within all of us, so the ideal of the superhero. Uh, that to me was, was one of the beauties of this story. Uh, and then the heroes are sort of standing back and, and watching, just watching in awe uh, as the rescue workers went in to, to, to try to save anyone they could. The artist who also, the artist who drew this book is, is John Romita Jr. Um, and first, a little bit of background on Johnny. Jo Johnny is a second generation Marvel artist. His father was one of the instrumental creators in the creation of the Marvel Universe. And Johnny's been with us for decades now, uh, Johnny Jr., uh, as well as John Sr. And, uh, and Johnny is a, a, a die in the wool New Yorker. Uh, you would know it the minute you heard his accent. And, uh, and he was one of the first people that, that called up and said, we have to do something. What can we do? As it turns out, also Johnny is a legendary Spider-Man artist and was working on Spider-Man at the time. So when we asked him to draw this book, uh, he, he poured his heart and soul into it. It may be one of the greatest stories he's ever drawn. Uh, that, that image, again, of Spider-Man just over the Twin Towers and, and, and viewing the destruction is gut-wrenching. Uh, every panel is gut wrenching. The the you know the the, the sadness, the pathos, the uh, the hope within every panel is absolutely beautiful, uh, and you could tell that that only a New Yorker would be able to draw that book the way that Johnny did. One of the things that that, that Johnny did in order to to prepare himself for for, for drawing this particular issue because it, it was going to be very very emotional, was that uh, as, as artists we tend to use a lot of reference material when we're drawing specific things in the real world. So uh, Johnny. John, I remember talking to Johnny, and, and, and he was telling me about how he, he took all these newspaper clippings and magazine clippings of, of what had happened in you know, Ground Zero and pictures of Ground Zero and the firefighters, and he literally pasted them all over his artboard uh, as, constant, as a constant reminder and inspiration of what it was that he was drawing, which I think just added to the emotional level of him as, as that he was experiencing as he was drawing this particular book. Um, you know, when the the book came out, it, it was it was very very well received. Um, there were a few people that didn't quite understand the the message behind the book and started to read through it literally, which is really not what was meant to to happen. But I think overall the the reaction was very very strong, and to this day it remains a, a, a actually one of the legendary issues of Spider Man. Uh, even the cover is very iconic. There was no image on the cover. It was just a, a, a black cover with a, a Spider-Man logo. Because ultimately, we didn't know 
what image, what, what could possibly portray um, the, the horror and the sadness that went along with the event. So we just figured we'd just leave the color, cover blank. Heroes was a little bit different. Yes, H Heroes, Heroes was, a, uh, was a, a creation of hundreds of different hands uh, from creators. Uh, we had writers that, that wrote uh, short prose, uh, short stories, just maybe a, a sentence or two about their feelings about 9-11. We incorporated that with artwork from artists and, and, and the goal, the, the, the basic premise of it was uh, a, a tribute to the, the, the rescue workers of all shapes and sizes and, 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 and whichever department they may come from, it didn't matter uh, with the, uh, the New York City workforce. But ultimately, it, it was, it was a, a hodgepodge of all these images put together, uh, which I think created a really beautiful narrative when it was all said and done. Uh, and then those pieces, those art pieces were taken out and, and auctioned, uh, and uh, we raised money for charity as well. I mean, I, I actually own about six of those pieces. Uh, I bought a bunch of them. Um, but it was uh, it was a, it was an amazing coming together of the creative community because it wasn't just Marvel artists. We reached out to artists from other companies as well, uh, and they just joined in and, and uh, helped us with the project. Uh, Moment of Silence was then was sort of the the the, the final chapter in this, which was um, we we decided to do a uh, a comic that told uh, was it three stories or four stories? I'm trying to remember now. I think. Uh Tom said it was four. Before, okay, I'll go with Tom. He's got a better memory. Uh, Moment of Silence was four stories, uh, all of which were told in in, in, in pantomime by by the by the actual artwork. There was there were no word balloons, um, so there was nothing to read, and it was just a, a silent comic. The story that I wrote was about our family friend Michael Otten. It was based on his life, uh, and that day that actually brought him to the Twin Towers uh, and. Uh, and his uh, unfortunate demise. Um, so at the time, and, and it wasn't it wasn't just Sony. They, they were, there were several other companies and studios that uh, had twin tower imagery and decided to not go out with that imagery. And uh, and you know, my personal feelings from a Marvel standpoint uh, were that that I I thought for me that was wrong. Um, you know, we I mean I was asked by fans, hey. Are there any covers you guys got coming up or any pages with the Twin Towers? And it didn't really matter to me because to me those towers existed and have always existed. And, and I, I, I think it was everyone really overreacting at a time uh, and being way too sensitive about these things. Uh, and I felt it was important, you know, and I've always felt at Marvel it's important to tackle anything like this head on. Um, a lot of people just avoided telling 9/11 stories altogether, uh, and and you know people thought it was risky for us to tell that Spider-Man story with the Twin Towers, but to me, it, again, because <clears throat> because we use New York City as our tapestry, as our canvas, as whatever you want to call it, our characters play in New York for the most part. To not do this would be callous, and 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 would be would be. Uh, sort of selfish in a lot of ways, saying we only want to take the best of New York and we want to, you know, if something bad happens, we want to avoid, no, our characters always deal with these things. Well, buildings get knocked down all the time in the Marvel Universe. So and they, and, and they know, do, and they do. Damage yeah. control would have cleaned it up in a heartbeat. Right. <laughs> And, and and arguably, you know, there, there there were some creators that were sensitive to it, and you know, if if they had a, a scene in which maybe Galactus comes down and tears down a building, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. No, guys, you know what? We have to stay true to what it is that we do, um, and, and we can't shy away from these issues. And I know there's going to be sensitivities out there, but ultimately, you know, the, it's 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 uh, it's a lot of knee jerk reaction based upon things that just happened. Um, I think the best way for us to, to to deal with these tragedies is to deal with these tragedies. And not to hide away from them, not to not to uh, you know coddle everyone because oh my God, people don't want to see a building. Yes, I understand. It, 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 it's a horrible thing. I was there. I saw it happen. Um, but I think we we all have to deal with it. If not, we never get over it.